Coronavirus is having an impact on all people living in South Africa and healthcare workers are on the front line. Kevin Halama, the spokesperson for Hospursa, joins me via Skype. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News this afternoon. So Hospursa has previously expressed some unhappiness with uh, how health workers are being treated in terms of lack of access to protective gear in some situations. What's the current situation now and what are you advising your members to do? Uh, uh, good, good afternoon, and, and thank you for having me. Um, uh, basically, what Hospesa is saying um, is that uh, we are encouraging our members uh, not to undergo any work when uh, uh, sufficient PPE is not provided. And these are not just uh, our, our members within the health sector. There's also We also have members at, uh, at your sand parks. We also have members at uh, KZ and Wildlife. We also have uh, um, uh, other essential workers that are working at, uh, uh, at Sandbus. So what we are basically saying is that uh, all health workers, they should be provided with the sufficient PPE. If that is not provided, then our members, we're encouraging them not to under, undergo any work. When that 500 billion rand COVID relief package was announced by President Cyril Ramaphosa, Hospursa expressed some unhappiness with the lack of specifics uh, for healthcare workers. Tell us more. Well, we were very disappointed uh, with that when the stimulus package uh, was announced. Health workers were not uh, mentioned in there. Uh, we're currently sitting with the uh, with problem uh, at the PSCBC where a lot of the public servants have not received their salaries, which, inclu- which um, have not received their salary increases, which includes your health workers and government is pleading poverty. But instead, what we are seeing, we are seeing all other sectors are being included in the stimulus package, yet the public servants, essential workers, they're not, not being included in the stimulus package. So now health workers are feeling undermined by government. They are feeling they're not appreciated by government. And uh, and this is, is, is a growing mood that we are seeing within the sector. And, and we've cautioned government uh, that uh, it needs to come to the party by ensuring that uh, certain incentives like danger allowance, uh, sufficient PPE, as well as, uh, as, as, as training, uh, including uh, maybe even counseling, at a number of, of, of the facilities. It, it needs to be there. We need to protect health workers as they are the foot soldiers uh, against this fight uh, against COVID-19. So tell us a little bit more about how you do call for that. Who do you engage with in government and, and what, if any, discussions have you had and what's come out of them? Um, we, we've written to the Minister of Health um, and we've, uh, we've stated all the issues that we had, even issues that are pertaining to your EMS workers whereby we are also there battling to get uh, uh, them to get PPE. So we've, re- we've written to the Minister of Health. We haven't received uh, much responses with regards to some of the, the main uh, issues, like, for instance, your transport, your PPE, um, uh, as well as the, 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 the training. Um, uh, uh, so so we, we do engage with Minister. Uh, in the provincial side, we do engage with all the various MECs. For SPESA sits uh, within the various strategic forums uh, within the, the different provinces where we engage uh, the, the members of, of the Executive Council for Health. So, um, but in terms of PPE, we are moving forward there uh, with, with getting our members protected. But it's the incentives part where we're not getting anything from government. Government is not committing to any tax breaks, which we have called for. Government is not committing to any danger allowance, which we have called for. And as well, we has not even confirmed on, on, on transport, because we are also saying Transport needs to be provided to health workers as we can't have health workers using public transport uh, to commute to their workplaces uh, with uh, unknown or uh, unsuspected cases. So, Kevin, there is a projection. Obviously, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but that our tax uh, revenue collection is going to fall by at least 6%, and that's a best-case scenario. We could see even 18 to 24% fall. How do you balance that with the need um, for you to give tax breaks to health workers and to support them financially? Uh, look, from, 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 from our perspective, what we are saying uh, is that a tax break is one of, of the measures which government can look at to show uh, that uh, they do appreciate uh, health workers, because currently there is nothing that has been provided to health workers. Every single day we are watching media briefings of different sectors where you have your ministers of arts um, uh, giving some incentive to athletes, 
You have various ministers coming on, on, on TV, on national TV broadcasting, different measures that are being put in place. What we are saying is that a tax break can be one of the measures that government needs to, to look into. Um, I mean, there is a government in Ghana. They have given health practitioners such an incentive. Other governments across the, uh, across the globe have given um, uh, health workers incentives like your danger allowance. Even currently, as I speak with you, we are engaged with net care to ensure that our members at, at NetCare, they also are for the, the, the danger allowance. And those talks are at an advanced stage, and it does look like the private sector, uh, which is NetCare, is going to, to, to accede to that demand. So what is stopping government from ensuring that public service uh, health workers are also being given the same demand? Kevin, we, we need to wrap up, but I'm glad you brought up the issue of the anxiety um, that some healthcare workers may be experiencing because they're obviously working in a very challenging environment. Uh, projections are saying we're going to see a peak either in July or September. So it is going to get worse. It is going to be overcrowded. How does that, um, the mental health aspect impact on healthcare workers and what are you going to do to mitigate the fact that you aren't getting a response from government at the moment and a little bit of help from the private sector? Uh, I think from, from our side as HOSPESA, what, what we're looking at doing is, is, is intensify our calls uh, to government because uh, currently we do have uh, a sector which is, is very much understaffed, a sector that uh, is, is very much demoralized to do any work whatsoever. We are seeing that in a number of provinces, like in the Eastern Cape, where there is pop-ups of a health workers uh, downing tools because they feel that they are not being appreciated. And, and, and we think that uh, with our in, uh, if, if we intensify our calls and intensify our action with government at the different public councils, uh, government can assist to our demands and we can get health workers to be focused more towards uh, fighting COVID-19 than uh, the incentives that we've put in from government. Kevin Halama, spokesperson from Hospursa, joining me there via Skype. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. This